Nat 20. Welcome back to Nat 20. This episode isn't actually going to be a deal with demons. This is just going to be a history episode where we talk about Haldania. Specifically Stan and a little bit about the Rune Knights. So, first of all, just want to say Merry Christmas because this is coming out on Christmas Day, I'm, I believe. Yeah, so. <laughs> and Merry Christmas, Gage. Merry Christmas, Clayton. And no one else is here. <laughs> yeah. With me recording right now is Clayton, who plays as Blaze. We couldn't get everyone else to record this at this point for our episode on Wednesday, so we decided to just make some history episodes. So, yeah, so I guess we'll start talking about it right now. So, uh, Sten is on the northwestern side of Calthania. It's nestled between four mountains, and on the other side of one of the last mountains to the west, is it basically flattens out and goes to the sea. So Sten was first founded here by a dwarf clan named the Sten clan. They came from Avranches when it was still occupied by the pirate queen named Jinmar Ironleaf. Or actually it was right after that. Okay. That's the one we talked about in the last history of Telfania. Yeah. Yeah, so Jinmar Ironleaf was a major pirate who had a fleet of like a thousand a thousand ships and eventually enough people tried to send uh bounty hunters after that she and her fleet just decided to leave the mainland they were at before and had to this had to try to find a new land to settle in which they found was Southania. yeah a thousand ships that's like six more than captain jack sparrows right <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs> so basically, uh, after a while, eventually the rest of the people on the on old Teltania came to new Teltania, took over, and uh, the captain named Avranches took over the city of Avranches. It wasn't named Avranches before, but it was just named Avranches after the new guy came and took named, over. It was named after Avranches. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh his first name was Avranches. Do I have his first name on this? Maybe his first name was Av and his last name was Ranches. No, or his first his name last was name was Avranches. No, what if his first name was Avron and his last name was Chez? I would just call him Chez for short. Hey Chez. How you doing? <laughs> Merry Christmas, Chez. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just I'm just looking up what Avranches' first name was just because I forgot what it was. If I have it somewhere here, I should have it somewhere here. What's a first name for Avranches? Philippe? <laughs> I meant to say Felipe. I don't know why I said Philippe. <laughs> Is it Geralt of Rivia? Uh, his name was... Ronald. Donald. Uh, Mickey. Where, where... Oh, Pintal, B Y N T H A A L, Avranches. Third next guess. Yeah, you were really close with your Pintal. last one. With Donald? Yeah, super close there. Yeah. Oh, no, my last one was Mickey. Yeah, Mickey was your last one. What does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so after Pintal, Avranches took over Avranches, about a year after that, the Sten clan of dwarfs who lived there were getting. Uh, really annoyed with everything that Avranches was trying to do and all the changes he was trying to make. And because the Stan clan were some of the major leaders in the city, they were runites who were handpicked by Jinmar Arnleaf to actually enchant different weapons or materials or to enchant like locked doors or anything like that to keep people away. Were they mostly as one race? Yeah, uh, they were basically all just uh, uh, they were all from the same race of dwarves. Oh, they were dwarves? Yeah. Then I'm not surprised they were bitter and angry. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually they got an, too pissed off at all of that and decided to just leave Avranches with all of their goods. And they had a few friends that came with them. They did stop in Stillsby to try to get more of their friends to join them, which a lot did. And so, 
they decide to just start exploring the continent. They start by traveling north, past where Ait currently resides, then explored uh, west a little bit to the mountains, went through the mountains, but they never actually stopped anywhere that uh, that they settled for, for a long time. Mm-hmm. That was until they reached this plot of land that was like a plateau in the middle of four large mountains surrounding it. And they found that there was no wind here, there was no terrible weather. All of the bad weather or wind was uh, kept away from by the mountains. And they found the soil there was really good in the summer, so they decided to settle here. And eventually they started making more and more buildings, and they started to send ravens out to everyone they knew telling them this is the bread butter no bread what what the bee's knees sure the bee's knees of Teltania. I, I was trying to think of what people were saying that north america was way back in the day this is the butter for your bread no it what was it now it's the it never snows here they straight up lied to people <laughs> i remember that in social yeah. studies yeah, I can't remember what they used to say. They sent ravens out, and the raven said, I can show you a whole new world. It's Aladdin. Oh, I haven't uh, seen Aladdin for a, a long, long time. New world. You don't need to see and Aladdin to know the song. The new one either. What? No, no, you don't need to see that to know the song. A whole new world. Listen, it's been like probably 15 years since I saw Aladdin. Okay, it doesn't excuse the fact that you don't remember a great song. <laughs> Next you're going to tell me you don't remember the Mulan song. I don't. Men worth fighting. Oh! <laughs> Again, it's been like 12 years since I've seen Mulan. Fucking carry on. I'm upset. <laughs> uh, so, they found this place really to their liking and... They began creating more buildings, and they discovered that they were so close to, close to the sea, so it was great to fish there. So it's about an eight-hour trek over to the mountain, that's to the west, to get the sea. So they told all the people they knew about this place, and more and more be- started to come by and started to settle there. And eventually it was starting to become a somewhat of a large town, so they decided to look into the area for what they could actually do as far as industry. industry. And they uh, decided to check out the mountains all nearby, and they found that some were amazing for materials. Like ore and stuff? Yeah. So one of the mountains, they started mining it, and they it was the best quality ore that anyone had ever found in Tothania so far. These guys literally hit the d jackpot. <laughs> yeah. So they began... Sten pretty much became like a mining empire, and any, every single blacksmith in Teltania needed to have ore from that mountain, because nothing compared to it. So It's like Adidas shoes. Like, what are shoes? I guess Nike would be a better example. Oh, okay. Or is it because all the other ore was bad and that was only good, or was it just like, man, no. brand name ore from Sten? <laughs> it, it is more than just Everyone wanted to have this high quality ore to work yeah. with to make high quality weapons. Have you seen my new fresh diamonds I got <laughs> from Sten? I love that store. <laughs> Only cost me an extra 600 gold pieces. <laughs> so this basically made Sten one of the most important cities in Teltania for a long time because that's where all of the ore came from. And after a few years after this jackpot, they decided to, they kind of separated from the rest of Tothania, they decided to make their own state just for the city and the area around the city. Holy shit. Did that work? It did for quite a while. So for the next 100, 150 years, they were pretty much monopolizing the ore industry. And, but slowly they started to creep their prices up like dollar by dollar until it is so high that some towns can actually afford it. And so that meant that the blacksmiths had really low quality weapons from then on. So eventually this pissed enough towns and enough cities off that 
east of Easton Town, they decided to create a force. And they marched towards the state of Sten and laid siege to it. Shit. Yeah. And <laughs> the siege lasted for about 42 days. Holy fuck. Yeah, it is, it is a long-ass siege. Damn, Sten, get shit on. Yeah. And the people of Sten would not allow anything to happen. Espe- like, especially the leaders of Sten who were the initial, like, Sten clan tribe. Right. And they were growing richer and richer and richer every single day from every single shipment of ore that went out. Until they were pretty much, like, sitting on piles of gold. So they're the 1% of Telfania. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, like, uh, the 18 small towns and three cities, that uh, they amassed 15,000 people and laid siege. Mm-hmm. And the siege lasted until two events happened. In the same day. The first event was four of the main people of the Stan clan, Sten clan tribe, disappeared overnight. The second was that a tiefle named Cyril, 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 Cyril <laughs> fuck. You, mo- you made these I names. Know, Cyrilius <laughs> sneaked into the city and single handedly kidnapped the wife of the like next in charge of the Sten clan. Snook, sneaked, snook. Sneaked her out of the city and snuck her out of the snuck city. her out of the city. Thank you, and held her ransom. And with that, the stand the la- last Sten clan member kind of surrendered and agreed to allow everyone into the city. And eventually, after you agree to your terms, man, he surrendered. Yeah. Come on, bro, you can't do that. Boys before hoes. <laughs> That's not the saying. Bros before hoes, there we go. <laughs> so there are three major details from the siege that have never been confirmed on or like agreed upon. The first is where the Stan clan disappeared to. Cause since that night none of them had ever been seen again. Some say they went to live in mount in the mountains that surrounded Sten. Others say that they were all murdered in their beds and bodies disposed of. A few theorists say that a god decided to do something about the greed and banished them to a realm without any like monetary means. Or some also say that they were transformed into like simple-minded creatures that can comprehend money. I think they're alive and living in the sewers, forming an <laughs> army of lizard people. And one day they will rise up and destroy the world. And there are two other theories to this. I guess three because of the one you just said. But That's my theory, man. Yeah. They're the real villains. Someone also came up with the idea that they were dragons. Uh, th- yeah, they were dragons the whole time and were just polymorphed into dwarfs. And that's why they were so enchanted with getting more and more gold and treasures. And some people say that they eventually flew out of the castle in the dark of night and who knows where they went. And all, all others say that they disguised themselves and just went to separate towns to live out the rest of their days. Dude, I hope they're dragons. How sick that would be. Because then that could be like a cool quest where Blaze kills them all and bathes in the glory of it all. Because <laughs> Blaze is a hero. So the s- Why'd you make that face? He's a hero. <laughs> all right. <laughs> The second detail is where all of Sten's gold and treasure went. So, when the siege was over and the castle was taken over, and you and everyone who went to try to rescue the vaults and stuff, they didn't find anything left, not even a single copper piece. <gasps> they and, ate it. And as I had said before, they were like pretty much sitting sitting on gold. Well, if it's a dragon, they wouldn't leave their hoard. They yeah. love that like. More than anything. Like, if they had a daughter, they wouldn't love it as much as they love their hoard of treasure, yeah. you know? So, they ate it. <laughs> or they'd, like, scooped up in, like, little, like, hobo, like, sticks with the burlap yeah. sacks on the end and put it over their wings and flew away with that. I think that's an adorable <laughs> way to imagine how that happened. If they're dragons. Yeah. 
They could be evil demon sorcerers or lizard people. <laughs> so there are a few theories on where it went. So some think that the Sen can just ran away with it, even though it is like a huge amount of money that no one could carry themselves. Yeah, I'm doubting that. Others think that the god who may have taken care of stopping the family uh, may have taken it for themselves or hid it somewhere on the continent. Others think that those who captured the castle took it for themselves and lied to everyone about it. And there's also a theory that there was no treasure in the first place, and the real treasure was the friendship that the Sten Can had made along the way. <laughs> you wrote that in there just to be fucking lame. Yeah. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a friend in me. You heard that one, right? You heard yeah, that? Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, course, good, yeah. good. Fucking, I throw fists. <laughs> I don't know. I think friendship is a really important gift, and Blaze loves to make friends. And that's the real treasure at the end of it all. It's the, the, the bond we all share together. <laughs> I fucking love you guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thanks for coming out, Duncan. Oh, sorry. Thanks for coming out, Tony. No, he didn't show up either. <laughs> oh, also, I should mention that we'll have a Christmas special next week. Hopefully. Ooh, shameless fucking self-insert there. I see that. <laughs> I guess it's their own video. I guess yeah. it's not a big deal. <laughs> so the third detail that no one has agreed upon is about the tiefling, Cerulius. No one ever remembered meeting, meeting her or talking to her before, and no one knows where she came from or when she went after the siege. Uh, there are some theories. So, one is that she was just a random person who, wanted, who saw Ron and wanted to change it. The second was that she was sent by a god to stop all of the greedy nonsense. Wait, Cerellius was a girl? Yep. Yeah. Epic. All right. <laughs> Third one is she was really one of the Sten in disguise and took the wife captive in order to help the rest of the Sten escape with their money. And the last one is there was no actual Cerulis. That's a really popular theory. It didn't happen. <laughs> was there gold? No. Was there an uprising? No. Was there a tiefling? No. Who are these people? These yeah. people are dumb. They probably just sit at home and don't even go outside. Like us. <laughs> So, after the siege, a new lord was put into place in Sen, who had agreed to the terms with the rest of Teltania, and they were part of Teltania once again. Peace was throughout the, se- the city for most of the few- for most of the next few centuries. Every once in a while, the people of Sten would have to fight off an orc or a goblin army or some other monsters, maybe a cyclops, that were in the area. But overall, there wasn't too many conflicts. And they seemed to kind of stay out of any other conflicts that are concerning other major cities. Mm-hmm. So if, there, if two cities were fighting, they would pretty much what they would do is they just haul trade with both sides until the war was over. And they never really started any wars or battles with any other surrounding settlements or cities, communities, anything like that. The only other major conflicts that really happened in Sten was every once in a while they'd have to go to the mines and fight some either some devils or demons or monsters or stuff like that that had come up through the very low levels of the mine or had somehow appeared there. And most of the time this didn't cause too much trouble or destruction or death. Uh, usually they they'd have enough force to easily kill everyone. So that's basically the history of how Sten came to be and how it is now. Who so, rules over Sten now? Uh, right now the ruler of Sten is a dwarf named uh Lauren, L A R E N. Lauren. Uh, Stone Skull. Stone. Ooh, 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 I like that. He has been the leader for about a decade now. Most people like him, and everyone enjoys his company. And there's not too much anger about him politically. Maybe they're all scared of him. I mean, his name is fucking Stone Skull. <laughs> is it because his heart, his head is really hard. Yeah. Well, 
that's his family name, but that's how the first one of his family was named that. They just have super hard head. Really thick skulls, yeah. so they're kind of dumb. Yeah, uh, that was <laughs> way back in the day. They're not so dumb anymore. So could I could crack his skull if I got enough flurry of blows in there? Probably. Just in case we ever fight the King yeah. of Stan. Uh, so I'll, I'll just talk a little bit about the demographics of Stan right now. So right now, about half the population is dwarfs of different clans and stuff. There might be like two or, th- well, maybe like ten dwarfs who are still ancestors of the, uh, of Sten clan from way back when, but there aren't many of them left. They're like a very thin bloodline to yeah. the point where no one gives a shit, basically. Yeah. And also, after like how much they were in it for power and money, people were starting to not like them as much. So that's why they kind of died so, off. So, would you say the Sten aren't well liked? For the most part, like they definitely weren't well liked for a long time. Now it's starting starting to slow a little bit, just because mm-hmm. forgiveness and not caring as much. Yeah. And being that the the Sten aren't the ones who have been in charge for a long time. <clears throat> and then the next large demographics are elves, gnomes, then half elves, dragonborns, and then finally tieflings, halflings, and humans. There are about four thousand people in the city, give or take. And it's not very big at all. Uh it's not huge, no. Probably. Like I think Avranja's has around eight thousand. Still speed probably has fifty thousand. Still has 50,000? Yeah. Oh, okay, so that's like more of a city. So yeah. Sten, is, Sten is not that big at all then, really, yeah. compared to most. Yeah. I don't know, you said between four mountains, and I just like, I was like, boom, Toronto. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, that went to my head. Uh, and as far as like religion and stuff like that, uh, Sten is home to the largest church and shrine that's de- de- dedicated to Hephaestus in Teltania, and about a third of the population follow this faith. Okay, so Hephaestus is a pretty big deal yeah. in Sten. Makes yeah. sense. Between four mounds, lots of expensive ore that everyone likes to buy. Yeah, exactly. You know that Lacoste ore, <laughs> the little alligator symbol. Yeah. But in uh, the world of D&D, we don't put alligators. We put dragon turtles or... Yeah, you've got you've got to have that brand name. you got to have that fucking brand name, bro. Yeah. You need that bling bling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bling bling, 24 carat. Yeah, yeah. What up? And then the, <laughs> the other church, churches and trying to see are Lathander, Maestra, Saloon, and Arl. What about Ayun? Ayun? What is Ayun again? God of knowledge, bro. That's my boy Blaze's lady. I don't think Ayun was in the city. Nah, it's okay. Doors are dumb anyway. <laughs> I know, I've had to fucking walk around with one named Ryan for a while. All he does is heat metal, heat metal, heat. Oh, it didn't work. Heat metal. <laughs> And then I'll talk a little bit about the festivals and celebrations within the city. Christmas. I'll start with Christmas. You know, because it's Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Hey, Merry Christmas, Gage. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Clayton. Merry Christmas, Gage. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. 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 Miss. So- Christmas! <laughs> right, I'm sorry. So, one of the most popular festivals that happens is called the Day of the Dark. And, like, due to the city being surrounded by mountains on on all sides during the winter, there's not a a whole lot of sunlight. And there's even one day where the city gets no sunlight at all. And that's called the Day of the Dark. That's fucked. So, it's a day that's shrouded in darkness, like, 24 hours. And celebration. So... On the state, people bring candle, bring bu- a bunch of candles onto the streets, lighting them, and then... Glow sticks. There are no glow sticks. <sighs> no glow sticks? Sucks. And then there's, like, feasting, drinking, listening, and watching performances all day. And then fireworks are shot off at every hour of the day. With, uh, with 12 midnight, ending with, like, a huge fireworks contest. Where there are f- five different categories that people can win, which is the highest firework, the largest firework, the most pleasing, the loudest, and the longest going firework. 
And all of the winners winners will receive a trophy that spurts out mini fireworks whenever it's like picked up, picked up, or a word is said around it. That is sick. Blaze is interested as <laughs> fucking that. That is cool. And then they also win some prize money and are inv- invited to the Lord's table during a feast the next day. As Do they call the next day the day of the light, the day of the dawn? It's good, <laughs> maybe. Because that's <laughs> not gonna lie, Gage. I'm feeling myself yeah. on that one. I'm liking that. I'll write that down. <laughs> yes. Day of little the did Clayton dawn. know this was the day that he horribly changed the entire direction of Ryan's backstory. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's life will never be the same. And then another major part of the. Uh, festivities is that children are encouraged to dress up in costumes of monsters or stuff like that and are encouraged to try to sneak up on adults and try to scare them if the adult is actually scared then they must give at least a copper piece or some sweets to the <laughs> kid this is on day of the dark yeah you have to scare adults and if they scare the adults the adults have to give you money yeah <laughs> but if if the adult adult isn't scared, then it's usually a good idea for the child to run away because it's usually like a romantic moment of some kind because of all the candles and music and drinks and stuff like that. I'm going to need you to elaborate real quick. <laughs> the dwarves are like doing it in the middle of the street? <laughs> no, no, not doing it. Oh. Just like on like dates or whatever. So the kids scare you, they get money or candy, and if they don't, they have to run away. <laughs> they should run away. <laughs> Door of holidays are special, bro. And then, so the next major festivity after that, or actually probably before that, would be called Snow Spree. And it, it could be celebrated on a different day every single year, but it's celebrated on the first major snowfall of winter. And basically everyone goes outside to celebrate snow coming down. So it includes live music while everyone competes to make the largest snowman or most intricate snow or ice sculpture. And there's also a huge sleigh race around town with the adults pulling sleighs for the, their kids. And when the sun finally goes down, ev- everyone is invited to come inside the main hall to take part in a hot chocolate tasting contest. Hot and, chocolate tasting contest? Yeah. What is this place? Like <laughs> magical Santa <laughs> workshop land? This is amazing. I want to go to STEM. <laughs> We're in some nice it's hot chocolate tasting, fucking firework contests. And the winner wins a trophy that is able to be drank out of and can hold 25 liters of a liquid in it. And so, then. It's an alchemy jug that is only hot chocolate. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> and then it. at the end of this, there's a large feast that's prepared by the Lord of the City. And the previous year's winner of the hot chocolate competition actually makes all of the hot chocolate for everyone oh. using their, like, super awesome recipe. <laughs> the sweet recipe, and they make a hot chocolate fountain for all the children to bathe in. <laughs> <laughs> Often the hot chocolate is spiked with alcohol. I thought it was a kid's party. <laughs> I guess they're dwarves. Yeah. <clears throat> they start them young. <laughs> <laughs> And then the next festival is the Day of Light. So it's a lot like the Day of the Dark Festival, except it's the day with the most hours of sunlight, of uh, daylight. Oh, okay. And it's celebrated by a citywide picnic in the meadows west of the city. And along with this feast picnic thing, it's also the day of competition. So there are sports competitions or like lifting competitions, races, archery, jousting, sword fighting, staring. Staring contests. Yeah, drinking is a big one, actually. Yeah, and the drinks are usually spiked. <laughs> <laughs> and if the kids get caught, they better run away. <laughs> saying, man, run away. The adults are going to kill you. <laughs> and then the night ends with a toast to everyone in town with wine supplied by the local wine master. What I wouldn't kill to be a wine master. <laughs> And the last major festival, like, I'm not including any, like, actual holidays that happen in Tultania, just because they mostly be celebrated the same ways throughout every town. Like Christmas? Yeah. Except it's not called Christmas because there's no Christ in our campaign that has been talked about at least until now. <laughs> Pretty sure we've talked about it before. Shrek is canon, though, so yes. that's cool. <laughs> uh, what's, what, what's Christmas in Tultania, then? Uh... 
We haven't talked about that. Yeah, I, I never actually we, put that in. We could just be like a generic D&D campaign and call it the Winter Solstice. Yeah. Uh, I play see. D&D. Christmas isn't real. It's called the Winter Solstice. Because in Adventure Zone, it's Candlelights, right? Candlelights. Candle yeah, yeah, Critical Role, it's Winter's Crest. Yeah. Uh, this will be... Summer's Bane. <laughs> <laughs> Death to warmth. <laughs> uh, what's the good name? Uh, uh, let's see. What, what do we associate... Crystal Christmas Snow? With? What? Crystal Snow? Uh, it's not great. What do you associate Christmas holidays with? Snow? Cold? Uh... Family? Friends? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, candles, presents, uh, eggnog, uh, uh, God fearing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what it would be called, but it would mostly just be a celebration, like with family and friends, and present giving, and often getting together with neighbors to have a feast or drinking lots of wine and and just like relaxing into calmness kind of I think okay cool with some gift giving as well careful the gifts are usually spiked <laughs> especially in Sten <laughs> they're fucking wild in that city and like that would be celebrated somewhat the same way in pretty much every town or city in Tothania uh, so, and then there'd also be probably something similar to Halloween, I think, and uh, probably a celebration of the day that everyone, that the main population actually made it to Teltania from old Teltania. Like Independence Day? Yeah, something like that. And then the fourth major festival that's specific to Sten is called the Festival of the Guilds. Basically, it's a, it celebrates all of the guilds throughout the city and allows all of the masters of their trades to show off their wares. So whether it's blacksmithing, winemaking, glassmaking, and anything like that. But every once in a while, fights do break out a lot during this holiday due to competitors of the trade like arguing about whose stuff is better. And You get like those nice guys, though, like the mini yeah. guild, like the crochet guild. Like, they're yeah. just there, really, just to be a part of it. Oh, no, Crochet, like, battles really badly against the uh, stonemasons. For some reason. I don't know what Crochet <laughs> has going for him. I mean, little you can do against stone, but you can try your hardest. I like those little guilds, though. They're just really just there to be acknowledged. Yeah. Like, the, the book club. Yeah. Book club, or the, the, the manga club, or... Uh, <laughs> The billiards guild. I mean, you guys who just play pool all day, you know? They just want to they just want to be a part of the group. Oh, don't get me started on the billiards billiards club. They're ruthless. Fuck, Gage. What's wrong with STEM? <laughs> <laughs> Sounded so nice, now everyone hates each other. <laughs> Everything's spiked. They attack each other. I love it. But Can't due, to go to STEM. Due to this festival, it has led to STEM being one of the cities with the best masters of like various trades and stuff. So for the longest time, they're one of the absolute best for blacksmithing, one of the best for le leather work and glass making. Competition is a great whetstone. Yeah. It's a good proverb. Analogy. 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 I don't know. It's an analogy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like a saying that means something? Yeah. 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 Analogy. Merry Christmas, Gage. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Those are the four main festivals that occur throughout the year. The first two always happen in the winter sometime or early fall. And then the fest festival of the guilds usually happens late spring. And then the day of light is always in the summer sometime. Okay. And then I'll just go over a few of the notable people that have been from this town. Uh, so the first one is Garmin Ronbus, who's actually someone I talked about in our episode where everyone was in Fogmere, the ghost town. 
So Gar- oh yeah, he's yeah. the one who made the weapon or whatever. Uh, he was the apprentice to the main blacksmith there. Yeah, that weapon that um, Ryan wanted to know a lot about, but couldn't talk. Yeah, yeah, sounds like Ryan. Yeah, so pretty much Garmin Ronbus was a really good blacksmith who had moved from Fogsmere to Stan about a week before the people of Fogmere disappeared. <laughs> Fucking lucky guy. And he has no idea why any of that happened, but that's kind of why he's famous. Also with his skill in blacksmithing. Then there is Bonbis Bon Bonham, and he's a famous adventuring gnome from after the war against humans. So following the war, he kind of set out to search for treasure because he he knew there'd be a lot of treasure all around throughout the continent after the war settled down. So throughout his years, he had gained thousands upon thousands of gold pieces and other treasures and whatnot, and magic items and whatever. And he had even been known to make deals with dragons to have them stop terrorizing communities. He brought many banded drains down and ended a lot of slave trade in some places and stuff like that. So he's like your, your Batman? Yeah, except if Batman was like two feet tall. Right. <laughs> this gnome must be pretty famous. I've never met... The, no one's mentioned him, though. And he died in his early 30s due to a poison drink. And you've... He should have known better. Every drink in Sten is spiked. <laughs> <laughs> the damn fool, Gage. What was he thinking? <laughs> and when he died, there were around 30 other people in the bar, and no one has an, any idea who poisoned him. Or me. why. Because he always seemed like a good dude. It was the Sten people who were currently living in the sewers, forming an <laughs> army of lizard people. They had to give it to their greatest foe. Then, uh, one of the other notably be- notable people was Draren Deversman, and he was a famous commander during the war against humans. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention about Sten was they were one of the first cities to actually declare war against the humans when they started to like move on on everyone's territory and enslave people and stuff like that. Okay. Freedom fighters. They're yeah. like brave, the fucking Scottish, right? <laughs> you will take a freedom! Yeah. Yeah. So basically, like when that was happening, they started out by just stopping all trade with humans and the mostly human communities. And then you pretty quickly after that sent a Mo- the, a significant amount of their army down to fight on the front lines. Mm-hmm. And one of these guys, Drara and Deversvin, was one of the commanders during this war. And at one point, he had led a battalion of around 40 soldiers into the town of, into the town of Sient, and they were able to take the entire town from the humans. And they kept it from them for about two months until finally they had a final stand against them where it was pretty much 40 of them. Well, actually, 35 of them against, like, 400 of the humans. This is Sten! (laughs) And they took down, like, a good half of the human army that was fighting from there. And, yeah, that's pretty much why he was famous, just because of how massive of a victory he brought just total badass. Did yeah. he eventually die during that fight, though, I'm guessing? Yeah. 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 Devin Deversbin? Uh, Draren Deversbin. Draren Deversbin. I always remember you, Draren. I used to call him Draw for short. And then most of the other famous or notable people from Sten are just different guild masters who had perfected their arts in various ways, some adding magic to their wares, Others taking commissions from kings or important commanders, stuff like that. Uh, if Bear was from a place in Talthania, it'd be Sten. <laughs> it'd be Sten. <laughs> Had we talked about Bear in one of our other episodes? On the podcast? Yeah. I don't remember. I don't think so. Okay, well... I love uh, Bear. Yeah, I'll read out his <laughs> backstory. So I, I absolutely love, love Bear. <laughs> So, Bear was a character that Clayton played as for a one-off that I DM'd quite a while ago. I love Bear, bro. And basically... What a classic cleric. 
Basically, he was a cleric who was a bear who could talk. Legit, just a bear. Nothing special. No druidry. Yeah. Nothing like that. It's just a bear who walks on two legs with a Russian accent. Yeah, so I'll just... It was me, bear. I sell ale. <laughs> I'll just read out his backstory right now because I was super proud of making this backstory because of how weird as fuck it was. Either proud or drugged up. No yeah. one knows which one it was. Yeah. Oh, that is like in the morning or something, so I wasn't drugged up yet. <laughs> Yet. I save that for after afternoon <laughs> tea. So Bear, formerly known as Erga, is an Atlas Bear who long ago gained the ability to speak and do other human things. Long ago, before he could speak, he was just a regular cub of average size and intellect. But one day, he wandered off from the family, family cave in search of some berries to satiate his hunger. On his epic quest for food, he stumbled upon a huge grove of berry bushes. He ate one, then another, then another, and another. Eventually, he couldn't stop himself, and he ate all of the berries on the bushes, as well as some of the leaves and some of the wood. <laughs> Cheat day! <laughs> <laughs> it was all just too delicious. Exhausted after eating so much, Bear laid down and went to sleep right in front of the empty berry bushes. <laughs> Unknown to Bear, for the past 10,000 years, these berries had slowly been evolving to contain a toxic effect to keep animals from eating them. This is the furthest that any of the berry bushes of the site had gotten to, from keeping animals from eating them, but it was, in fact, still about 3,000 years from the berry bushes' end goal, world domination. Poor berries. If you were able to hear the bishop's thoughts while it was getting eaten, you'd have heard something like this. No! Not again! We were so close! Damn you, you fat-furred, ugly, future piece of manure. Our ancestors will avenge us. You'll see. You'll see. Also, unknown to bear, through the evolution of these berries, the berries had minute traces of an LSD-type substance. If Bear had eaten only a few of the berries, he would have been fine. But because he ate so many and ate all the leaves and the wood, he had the wildest and longest trip that any being in the universe had ever had. This is even wilder than the Lubert's Dinian Dantris race from the planet Ubulon 562 had ever had. And this race was one that was obsessed with LSD. Here, the eggs of LSD legitimately grew on wavy looking trees throughout the entire planet. This trip would have made the Lubert Sinian Dante's trees or LSD trips look like a trip to the supermarket with your sweet great aunt, who well, always seems to have those sweet, uh, sweet hard candies that you like in your pockets. Anyways, because Bear had so much LSD from these plants that as soon as he lay down on the ground to sleep, he began to trip. During this trip, he thought he was transported to a world that a gun unknown to him was, uh, was called Ogolmoth. <laughs> Here, all around him, were giant polar bears dressed in various clothes and speaking to each other in what Bear felt was a gibberish language. Also around him, on leashes, were what looked like naked, bulk-grown humans that walked on limbs. Merry Christmas. And were talking in the Bear language. Merry Christmas. Bear felt like he had spent years in this land and eventually learned how to speak language that these polar bears were speaking, which is common. Then, at one point in the middle of when he was about to ask a polar bear whom he had a crush on for a long time out on a date, the world began to turn wavy, colors began to swirl around him, and faces began to laugh at him in the clouds. Bear then fell on his back, unconscious due to terror. When he woke up, he was in the hospital for polar bears with an IV in his arm. Eventually, he was able to leave and went to the house that he was renting and went back to sleep. When he woke up, he realized he was lying on the ground in front of a bunch of empty berry bushes. He still retained his ability to speak and the intellect from what he thought was his time on Ogulma. That's my favorite part. <laughs> Fucking wakes up from a coma. You think that's where it is? No, he just goes home that same day, falls asleep. That's when he fucking wakes up. But he was the same age and half a day as he was when he ate the berries. Being like he didn't belong in the cold cave with his family, he moved to Frontier and opened his own tavern. To this day, Bear has refused to eat another berry for fear of a second traumatizing dream. Stupid fat fuck. Also, Frontier is a town I made up for my world. But, for the sake of Tothania, it can be Sten. Yeah. <laughs> 
He wins the ale competition every year. <laughs> like, Bear wasn't the one-off that was in Taltania, too. He was, yeah. So, I think it's canon that he was from Sten. <laughs> Oh, Bear, Bear was best. Bear had great tavern. He sold much great beer. He was very upset when he had to fight Necromancer. <laughs> it was not fun. Does not know why he went. <laughs> then Silly Girl left him in cave all alone. <laughs> he almost drowned in cave water. Stupid girl. <laughs> uh, anyway. Do you have any comments or questions about Stan or anything that could be more clarifying? Well, I don't know. Or any any like attributes of Sten you're wondering about still? Because I didn't I didn't go over a huge amount of it, just like the history, just the general look and like design and smell, the feng shui, yeah. the je ne sais pas. <laughs> That's not right at all. But... Yeah, so uh, the majority of the buildings in Sten are built from stone. That's mostly carried from the or taken from the mountains around it. Okay, and um. They aren't very large buildings. There are a couple that might be two or three stories, but that is the highest that any of them go. There are a few statues throughout town of uh, various important figures from Sen's history, including... Jared Devard's men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely him. There's uh, a major one of him like in the main town square, just overlooking the square. Spec draw. Draw. As well, there's... Is it very ornamental, or is it more plain-esque? Like, is it mostly just gray stone, or do they do a bunch of, like, designs and patterns and shit? For the most part, it's mostly gray stone. There are a few houses that are super colorful due to just personal prefer preference, but most of them are just, like, plain homes. Uh, look somewhat similar to each other, uh... But not complete cutout look likes like are built nowadays that are super ugly all in every single town or city and shouldn't be built that way because a lot of the time they're super inefficient and super energy wasting. But that's a whole other thing that, that I won't talk about right now. So. Whoa. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Gage. <laughs> Merry Christmas. And. <laughs> yeah, so. There's also a large statue of Bonbus, which Bonbus Bonham, which is kind of weird that it's a large statue when he was such a short dude. Yeah, he went, he's looking on from the afterlife yeah. from Snitch, and he's just like, "Yo, look at that beautiful big statue of me. I'm so much bigger than what I was when I was this little no man. And I'm big and I tower over everybody, just like I did in real life like, mentally." <laughs> Good job, BBB. <laughs> Uh, there are even a couple, well, all the statues, uh, well, back in the day, long before the war against humans, there were lots of statues of the Stan family. Most of those have been taken down and either hidden in the underground part of the castle or just demolished altogether just because of how much of douchebags there were. Wow. Why do they call the city Sten still then? Just because they didn't be like change the name after like a thousand years. That's fair, I guess. We could call it Bear. <laughs> Welcome to Bear. I am Bear. I I like to imagine that there's probably a statue of Bear there too. No. And that because Duncan's from there, he would have seen the statue of Bear. Why would there be a statue of Bear? Because <laughs> he helped kill a necromancer who was building an army to fight people. I guess so, but did anyone really know about that? I don't know. You uh, know what? Let's make a statue of Bear Cannon so the day we finally go to Sten, I can look at that statue of Mary and be like, ooh, I wonder who that is, and then never mention it again. I like it. He's now a notable person in Sten. <laughs> oh, I love what my offhanded comments shape history. <laughs> uh, do you have any other questions about Sten? Uh... You said Ryan's from Stan, right? Yeah. Do we know anything about his fan the people he grew up with? Uh, are they notable or are they just small town chum buckets? He was. I don't know what to say, how much to say, because it is his backstory, and I don't want to. I guess that's give fair. it out. Uh, Will we be visiting Sten anytime soon? There's always the possibility. Okay. 
What I can say about him is that he apprenticed with the local backsmith in town for a long time and ran his shop after his after he passed away. Because uh, I, I think he's pretty much like talked about that, but I won't say anything more of the subject. Okay. It's forbidden. I, I don't know. You kind of got it all. Very fleshed out city. I like it. Thanks. I hope when we visit, we can wreak havoc. Yeah. Like we did in Stillsby. <laughs> what a fucking mess. I, I guess I do have one more question. You yeah. Know, Bla- Blaze probably would have been to Sten a couple of times, I'm betting, right? Yeah, I mean, probably. he explored mostly the northern, but he's been all over the fucking place. Yeah, like if he's traveled all over the continent, he would have probably been there once or twice. To Baxi, are they welcome there? Are they normal? Kind of. Uh, Not many to Baxi go all the way there. Yeah, Every tabaxi. once in a while they get a tabaxi visitor, but I, uh, no tabaxi currently live in the city. Oh, okay. I was just curious. Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions? Can't think of anything else that I have to say specifically about Stan. Oh, one thing I should say about the Stan Can was they were all rune knights. And back when they were, well, I said that earlier, but when they were employed under... Uh, the lady of Everon, Jinmar. Jinmar. She had ordered them to teach a lot of the other people within the city how to be rune, rune, might, rune knights and their ways and stuff like that. So that's one of the major reasons why there are rune knights all through Teltania. All because of the Sten bast- The Sten dragons! The dragons. You were saying they were lizard, lizard people. Yeah, that one seemed less and less realistic. And technically, if they're dragons, they're still lizard people. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always right, bro. Reptile people. Reptile. Reptile lizard. Same thing. Let's be real. I look at a snake. It's just a legless lizard. Yeah, snakes are reptiles. I was thinking they were amphibians for a second. But oh, yeah, they're reptiles. How could you they- possibly think that? No, they're reptiles. Okay. Frogs are amphibians. Yeah. Next, we'll talk about biology. <laughs> uh, so I think this is where we'll probably end the episode. Okay, we won't talk about biology. <laughs> <laughs> so Merry Christmas, thanks. and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the history of Tethania. I love you guys so much. Merry Christmas.